we need to look up the last payment date. Invoice 1001 has four payments. And somehow we need to go through the date column and get the date for the last payment. Now considering that dates are numbers, and what we want is the biggest number in this column, based on a condition in this column, we can use the max ifs function. The max range, those are the numbers. We highlight the date column, comma. The criteria range, that's all of the invoices, comma. Then for criteria one, we have to tell max ifs which invoices we are interested in. Now close parentheses, and I have to come back, click back inside the function, click on max range, because I'm going to copy this formula, and I forgot to hit the F4 key to lock it. Then I do the same thing for criteria range 2, F4. That criteria is a relative cell reference that we want to move as we copy it down. Now I can use Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. And bam, there's our date. Now I can double click the fill handle with my crosshair or angry rabbit cursor and send the formula down. Be sure to go to the last cell and hit F2. We're verifying that all of those cell references are in the correct location, and they are. And there it is. We've looked up the last payment date for each invoice. Now, if you don't have Excel 2016 or later, let's just notice there are some numbers, a criteria range, and inside of this function, we put the criteria in a separate argument. Well, we can use those same three ranges, not inside of max ifs, but inside of the aggregate function. Now, the cool thing about aggregate is it has a bunch of different calculations. And in the function argument, we want to select the large function not the max function. And the reason why is function 1 to 13 cannot handle an array operation. Functions 14 to 19 can handle array operations. And what do we want? We want large. And we'll just say, hey, give us the number 1 largest. Now we type a comma. We get a bunch of options here. I'm going to choose 6, which is ignore errors, comma. And in the array argument, this is where we have to use those three ranges. Now, the numbers we want are the dates. And I hit the F4 key. Then I'm going to divide by a series of trues and falses. Divide, open parentheses. And then I highlight the invoice column, hit F4. Then I ask a direct question, are any of you equal to whatever this condition is? Now, when we do that right there, we're making an array operation because we're operating on an array of items. And if we highlight it manually in edit mode and hit the F9 key, which is evaluate, there's our series of trues and falses. Now, when we used max ifs over here, it generated these internally automatically. What we're doing here is we're creating them ourselves in our formula. Now, Control Z. I need to close parentheses. And that close parentheses right there and there is to force the equal sign to calculate before the division. Now, if I click on array and hit the F9 key, look at that. It has the, the underlying number for the dates. But we've used divide by zero errors to filter out what we don't want. And of course, the reason it divides by zero is the value false in Excel evaluates to a zero. Control Z. Now we comma, and in the K, this is where we put a 1. I want the first largest value. Close parentheses, and that's our formula. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Last cell, F2. All right, here's your bonus formula. Watch this. I'm going to copy this and put it over here. And we'll change this to Excel 365. That means this method will only work if you have Microsoft Excel 365. Well, we still use the amazing max ifs. And we highlight the numbers that we want to calculate the max from. But we don't have to lock it, comma. Criteria range, I put the whole column. Without locking, comma. And instead of a single cell, we make a function argument array operation. 
by giving the max ifs all of the invoice numbers, that'll force the max ifs to deliver one answer for each invoice. Close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, we don't have to manually copy down. It spills down the column. Now, when you have spilled formulas, none of the formulas below the top cell actually exist there. You can see they're grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell. All right, here's bonus number two. We want to convert this to an Excel table using the keyboard Control-T. When we click OK, we go up to Table Design, Properties, and we name our table. I called it Payment Table. The advantage of the Excel table is when we add new records, our formulas will automatically update. Now, because we might add new invoices, I'm not going to type these out. I'm going to use the new amazing sort and unique functions together to pull a sorted unique list. Close, close, and when I hit Enter, it spills down the column. Now I create the max ifs, the numbers. This is an Excel table, so I use my arrow at the top of the column to select the column, comma, invoice number, comma. And watch what happens when I select the values spilling from cell F7. It puts the spilled range operator in, which means later when this expands, so will this formula. And that's our formula. Now when I come down and add a new invoice and hit Enter, our report updates. Now if you don't have Excel 365, here's bonus number three. You click in a single cell, Insert, Tables, Pivot table from table range, existing location. I'm going to put it off to the side. Click OK. We want a unique list of invoices, so we drag invoice down to rows. Wow, that's fast. Date down to values. It defaults to count, which is not what we want. Right click. Summarize values by, and we want the max. Right click. Number format. Date. Click OK. Now when we add a new invoice to the bottom, now before I hit Enter, we can see that our formulas are already updating. But let's watch over here when I hit Enter. This doesn't update. This one's already updated. But it's easy enough to come over and right click Refresh. All right, so when we have to look up the last payment date, we can use the Excel table feature so everything's dynamic. A pivot table, but remember to refresh the amazing dynamic spilled array formulas in Excel 365. 2010 or later, we use aggregate. 2016 or later, we use max ifs. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel. It's fun. And if you want to check out a cool video about the history of max and min ifs calculations in Excel, check out this video.